important that all the elements would be present it is just that we can also be skipping many of these elements but we have to still return in the diagonal order that is the question itself for us now uh, one way which you could have initially thought when you have seen this was that okay i'll just simply traverse on my x i'll simply traverse on my y and then i'll just keep on pushing my elements like i'll just say okay just push this push this and then when the next time i'll just be traveling i'll push this and then i'll push this but you see i see that it is not important that if i am actually at the second element i could like let's say if i am at the third element like it is not important that i would be having a fifth element like this element five but i still might be having a element number seven so that that diagonal traversal in the matrix itself is possible when we actually have all the elements which means it's a square or a rectangle matrix but this technique right here would not work for us the technique which we discussed was just that we traverse and then we traverse on all the first row and on all the elements and from that element just go on, on the diagonal just go on the diagonal just go here just go here so it is one thing which will not work for us because we can have empty places also so it might give a null pointer exception cool so that was one thing and again rn uh what if i just have a if condition where i'll just check if that ing are actually in the bounds or not i'll say that's a good condition but still it is not a good technique why maybe i'll just ask you what if my matrix looks something like this i have one row having let's say uh, 1000 elements then i have only one 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 element then again i have 1000 elements so by your technique it what it will actually plan to do was it will actually and again here are let's say 1000 elements so by your technique it will actually go and try for this entire matrix which is actually 1000 into 1000 but in reality i only have 1000 plus 1000 plus 1000 i only have 3000 elements but your technique would actually go and do a 1e6 which is way lot so for sure this technique would not work which is tra traversing diagonally by just modifying the indexes right so now what is a better next technique now if we just look at the pattern now what we are concerned of is these numbers these numbers so are they following pa any pattern or if you had known that the diagonal numbers follow a pattern so what is that pattern itself so if you, you can actually see that the sum of their coordinates as in i and j indexes are are exactly as what is same if you will see the sum of their coordinates i and j indexes are same one here for here it is two for here it is three and so on and so forth so this is and see it is not nothing big new uh, it is a kind of thing uh, which you can just by drawing the entire matter itself you can get to know that their sum is actually same so what we can instead do is we can keep a track let's say i'll keep a hash map and in that hash map i know that this is the key and these are the values these are the values so what i will do is I know that okay for the key four I have these elements it, it's just that I have to make sure that I am processing in the reverse order which means firstly I just process this then this then this as you see in the output I have answer as if you just go and see I have my answer as one four two one and then four and then two so basically first down and then process up so it is just that uh, while processing just make sure that uh, if you are processing elements you're processing elements firstly from down and then up that we can make sure by just iterating from the very bottom itself so that is not a big case for us but yeah you just saw a technique that the sum of these coordinates of the diagonal elements are actually same which will infer i can just keep a hash map and with that hash map i can just store all the elements in the vector so again that was if i had these diagonal elements again an extra part on this is that if i just ask you considering like right now i'm just doing his diagonal what if i talk to you about his diagonal what is the similarity in this just let me know so you will see that the difference here the difference is zero 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 
the difference is same here if i ask you it's minus one minus one minus one here the difference is same here i ask you it's one 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 difference is same here i ask you it's two two difference is same so for this diagonal the difference is same for this diagonal the sum is same so interviewer can might also ask you a modification which is just give me this pattern rather than the pattern right here as you can see the pattern here is this like this he can ask you the opposite pattern also like this so please make sure that you remember this fact that the sum of the forward diagonal is same and the difference of the backward diagonal is same now that's a matter of fact that we'll just go on and simply use a hash map to keep the track of the sum it's just that we have to make sure that we are actually traversing in the reverse order so we'll actually go on from the very bottom so as to traverse okay in the reverse order itself all the elements we will be traversing and keeping in the reverse order as we go in from the bottom so i'll keep the first five in my vector of that specific hash map five and then when i will be going back and then going from here then i'll keep then i'll keep and push this particular five because of this key as five and then when i go back i'll just firstly i would have been pushed this four because of the his key four then i would have pushed his four because of his key four and then i would have pushed the four right here because of his key four so it's just that make sure to travel backwards like from the very bottom so i just just push it in now the time like we'll write the code but the the, the, the entire time is will be number of elements in this matrix itself right because we are actually traversing on all the input that's it and making a hash map of its indexes so it will be nothing but o of n where n i am saying that is the number of elements number of elements in this entire matrix or grid or nums and space will also be o of n because for sure i am using an unordered map again we will opt we can optimize this and that can be a follow-up in your interview itself let's firstly quickly code this up that how we can code this as we saw that uh, we need to actually as you saw here itself that uh, um we need to firstly keep track of what could be the maximum key also as you saw that in this example um, you need to keep track what is the maximum key here you will see that okay a key can be here a key can be here key is this value this value which is i i and j plus sum right so you should also be knowing the maximum key ultimately to actually go up till that point itself you can't just assume what could be a maximum key so i'll just also keep track of a maximum key parallelly while making my unordered map from key to all the elements itself right so what i'll do is i know that the maximum key or i can also say the maximum sum because because for sure um maximum sum is same as that of maximum key which is i, I plus j uh, now i also wanted the answer final answer as you can see i have to return a vector so i'll just uh, say that what happened yeah uh, i'll just say that okay just push back in this vector i also need an unordered map uh d r e d map now in this unordered map what i need to keep track of is from a key to actually all the elements what happened to my typing today cool uh, i'll just keep track of uh, all the elements which means from key which is the maximum which is the sum of the indexes to their actual uh, entire uh, elements vector now i'll just say sum to elements now uh, again i just i can just simply iterate on the matrix but it's just that i have to make sure i iterate from the very end so i'll just say i equals to nums dot size minus one i is greater than equal to zero and i minus minus and again go in from the indexes indexes you can go from the like end also as you can see here itself uh, if i just go back so if i just go in my indexes i can go from end also and i can go from front also because firstly it will get processed and then it will get processed so this is unique so both j equal to zero also will work and j from the end will also work if i actually go in so here i can just go in from anywhere let's take it uh, j equal to zero again uh, in for j i can go from anywhere right so i'll just do a nums of uh, i dot size again uh, it's a j plus plus so now i have firstly i'll just update my maximum sum which is nothing but the maximum key now maximum sum is nothing but i plus j and also i need to uh, push in um, for this sum to elements for this key which is actually i plus j just push back 
the current element which is at this index which is nums of i and j now when this entire thing is pushed i know that i have my ready uh, my map entire map ready of from some two elements then i can just iterate on all uh, the possible keys which is which the task is i just kept a maximum sum which is maximum key so i can just go and iterate uh, to all of my keys and i can just do i plus plus here uh, i just make sure that uh, I have to iterate on my entire map, which means I can just say that uh, some two elements map whatsoever element is there corresponding to this key i right here. Just push that element in my answer. Uh, I'll do a push back and I'll just say that element itself. And ultimately, uh, that is done, and I can simply return my answer. So, with this, you will see that we should be able to solve it if we don't have any typos. So, yeah. Uh, so the, with this the complexity is actually o of n and space is also o of n can we optimize it yes we can how uh, for sure we cannot optimize the time because we have to iterate on all of the elements we are using an extra space because of the unordered map can we optimize this yes uh, we can not very much we can move this o of n space to actually o of root n which means uh, we can just plan to do something like this that indirectly average space being used can be reduced to root n again that is not a flagship reduction in any space or time it's just that a possible follow-up question for you to actually reduce a space or anything you can think of to, re to reduce a space how we can do that if we just again visualize it we have an element we have other two elements now if i just go and ask you if i ask you to go like if, if you have an element zero if i ask you to go to reach to one uh, you can go right you can go down if i if i ask you okay you are at one and you have to go to all the twos okay you can go right you can go down you, you can go right you can go down okay so you can see that to reach to the next layer i can just maybe simply do a bfs traversal now this this bfs traversal i can just go right and down right and down but you will see that uh, if i go right and down again so i might be counting this element twice in my bfs so one way is i have to keep a visited that i have if i have visited this earlier so i should not visit it but that's a overkill again you would be using a space which you don't want it at the first place itself so rather let's do one thing that for the elements who are at the index j like whose column j is actually zero go down for them and for rest of the elements again rest as in like for him also go right go right so you will see that for the element whose jth index is at zero he will go down only and for the rest of the elements rest as in him also he will go right he will go right he will go right he will go right he will go right, will go right. thus covering all the next elements which are five so what i can do is and with this fact you will see that it's a bfs traversal so these elements will be stored in a queue and and any point of time in average or basically in the worst to worst case itself let's say if i take you okay these are n elements right here and these are n elements right here in the worst to worst case still in the worst to worst case maximum element stored inside the queue will actually be root n which is nothing but root n elements will be stored so now um i would be knowing okay one thing for sure that at maximum point of time i can have maximum root n elements stored in my queue and that is the space reduction from n to root n and mm, nothing just start from just start off your bfs from the first element which is 0 comma 0 and then firstly make sure again you want to traverse from diagonal like upwards right so make sure to actually go in down first if it is possible to go down and only when the j is 0 again the condition is firstly go down only when the j is 0 and it is possible to go down as in for him it is not it is not possible to even go down because j or basically x plus 1 or basically i plus 1 for him is not even there so make sure that okay it is possible to go down and also your j is 0 then only you have to go down and for the other ones which is for these elements for the other elements inside your queue just go right just go right so again for this example one it will go down initially 
and then for the other elements it will go right okay go right it will just get these elements so you will have elements in this order while traversing in the bfs traversal so thus you will see that for the first element just go down for the other elements just go right 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 for him it's not required to go right as you can see that it has no right again for right also just have a check that it is even possible to go to right or not for this the time will actually be o of n because you have to turn all the n elements but space will be just root n cool let's quickly see this up uh, how the code would look like for us let's quickly reset the code and again it's just a simple um our bfs traversal and in a bfs traversal if you know that we used a queue now we need a uh, indexes so we'll just use a pair of int int which is the ing coordinates so i'll just push back the first coordinate which is 0 comma 0 i don't need any visitor stuff uh, a simple queue traversal while my queue is not empty now what i will do is uh, i'll just find the size which is q dot size now i'll just check okay considering this is the size right now just get me all the elements now firstly i should get the current ing coordinates just from the front of the queue now when this part is done I, just, I should just remove this particular pair now again uh, i have got this element just push this element in our answer so i just say nums of i and j just push this up now when this part is pushed uh, my part is just to push his like firstly just go and check down uh, i'll just go and have a check at the down firstly i'll go and have a check if j is zero and also uh, i plus one is is in the range which is, is in the nums is actually less than the nums dot size so when this is a fact uh, you will know that you can actually go down also so you what you will do you can just simply push the down coordinate which is actually uh, same x coordinate which is i but a down coordinate increased so but a sorry uh, same incre sorry, increased x coordinate and the same y coordinate which is simply representing going down and also i said that if we can go forward just go forward so i'll just say if j plus one is less than uh, nums of i dot size uh, which means yes you can go forward just to simply go and go like you can simply just go forward with the same i and j plus one now with this the q will actually make sure to actually return you the answer and that will be your answer being returned cool let's quickly compile this bad boy up and yeah thank you for watching bye bye